Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the North East Lincolnshire series, centred around Grimsby and Cleethorpes along the Humber Estuary. North East Lincolnshire has 21 civil parishes. Here's today's for you. Welcome back to North East Lincolnshire, everybody. Now, you remember the Bradley episode, don't you, and how you couldn't park on any verges or footways? Well, that seems to be a North East Lincolnshire thing, because in this place, it's exactly the same. Look, you can't park on the verge or the footway in this place, for, mo for the most part. You can in this street though, but that's okay because I plan to park here anyway. Right, let's get walking around this one. It's a big one. This will begin at the Royal British Legion Club in this place, which is right over there. This is the parish of Waltham. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to Waltham, another large village on the outskirts of Grimsby, about four miles from the town centre. It lies close to the suburb of Scatho and the smaller villages of Brigsley and Barrow Billabeck. To the east is New Waltham, which is a separate village and parish which will be featured in its own episode. Waltham dates back to Saxon times at the very least, although Roman finds in the area indicate that it may have been occupied much earlier. The name Waltham is of Saxon origin. Originally Wieldhant, Waltham literally means wooded village. Without a doubt, the finest landmark in this place is Waltham Windmill, one of the very few windmills of its kind in the UK. It's renowned for having all six of its sails still in full working order, and was one of the last windmills in England to be fully operated by the wind. Nearby is a former World War II airfield, RAF Grimsby, which was originally Grimsby Municipal Airport. A museum at Waltham Windmill houses a section dedicated to the former airbase. Notable people associated with the village include Joanne Clifton, who you might know from the BBC TV programme Strictly Come Dancing, and one of the oldest women to have ever lived came from Waltham. Born in 1683, Elizabeth Shaw would live to the ripe old age of 117. So this must be a good place to live then, right? Well, let's go find out. Our start point is Ross Hall, the name given to the building which houses Waltham's Royal British Legion Club on the busy Barnaby Road. Across the road is a bus stop. Waltham is the end of the route for the number 10, which runs to Humberston via both Grimsby and Cleethorpes. There's a newsagent along here. The name above its door caught my eye, Northern Soul Grimsby Limited. I reckon this was once a fishmonger's. We're heading for a junction which is in fact two mini roundabouts. This is where we'll come across our first major bit of local history, the Waltham War Memorial. Taking the form of a wheeled cross, the memorial stands on the junction of Briggsley Road and Cheapside, honouring the 24 men of Waltham who died in the two world wars, 16 in World War I and 8 in World War II. Next to this, there's an information board which tells you a bit about the former RAF Grimsby. 
Now that board mentions RAF Grimsby, which is mostly within Waltham Parish. There's a tiny bit which is over the border into East Lindsay. I'm not going to be going down there to have a look at it because it's mainly just an industrial estate now and you can't get onto it anyway because it's private land. However, that is today's special section. Let's continue. We're going to head towards a school next along sort of the high streety area where there's some more shops. So this is Waltham's High Street, and for a village with a population in excess of 6,000, this doesn't disappoint when it comes to amenities. Waltham's High Street is lined with all kinds of businesses, ranging from local independent shops to much more well-known names like a co-op store, for example. There's also a pub. Well, Waltham actually has three. The Tilted Barrel, the Waltham Tea Gardens, and this one, the King's Head, which is a sizzling pub. Next to this is the former site of Waltham's old rectory, which was demolished and then levelled to form the village green. This anvil upon it was presented to the village in 1968. It remembers Harry Jackson, the last blacksmith in Waltham. Continuing up the high street, there's some more shops on the other side. Before we come to the library. This is open from Tuesday to Saturday and has a meeting room for hire, which can cater for up to 50 people. So uh, along this main street there are plenty of parish notice boards. I've picked this one here, I think it's the most prominently cited. I don't know whether this is going to stick this morning because it's so cold, as you can see it's all iced over, they don't tend to stick when it's like this. Let's see what happens. Oh, did okay actually, hopefully it stays there. <laughs> now I completely forgot that the church comes before the school. If I turn the camera around you can see the church. That's what we're going to be talking about next. The school is kind of off to the left. So we'll talk about the church first and then we'll head for the school. Dedicated to All Saints, here we have Waltham's main church. This dates back to the 13th century and much of its interior can be dated to around 1300. Infamously, one of its former rectors, Richard Baines, was implicated in the murder of the Elizabethan playwright Christopher Marlowe. In the late 19th century, All Saints underwent an extensive reconstruction, which included its tower and its nave. James Fowler of Louth was the architect. Around the back of the church, you can see it's been added to more recently by way of this modern extension. Let's head towards Waltham Lee's Primary School now. Waltham's original school, built in 1868, was a national school and it had a clock tower. Waltham Lees is the modern school and uses Waltham Windmill as its logo. Right next to the school is a run of bungalows, which caught my eye. Each of these properties are named in honour of someone, and I was about to find out why. Well, these are interesting little cottages, these bungalows. Um, I think they're all to do with this. GY Sailors and fishing charity. I wonder what that is, because I've got no idea. I wasn't expecting to come across anything like this around here. I thought it was just going to be a sort of a bog standard housing estate. That might be worth looking into. Okay, we're going to continue past these cottages. They carry on for a little while. And then this is generally now a residential area, which will loop round past a shop and then back to the main road eventually. And then we'll be heading down towards Grove Park. The Grimsby Sailors and Fishing Charity maintain almshouses in the Grimsby area for use by retired sailors, fish trade workers and their wives or widows. I guess then, this won't be the last time we see an area of housing like that around Grimsby. Aside from them, the majority of this estate looks a little something like this, mainly semi-detached housing with a few bungalows thrown in here and there. On Fairway, a typical street in this area, is a go local shop. And walking through this estate takes us back to the B1203, albeit another part of it. This is Grimsby Road, which runs south towards a roundabout. This tall building may look like a block of flats, but it is in fact Waltham's BT Telephone Exchange. 
like allotments, finding these is almost becoming another running joke. Once at the roundabout, we turn left briefly along Station Road, but the only station you'll see along here is Waltham Fire Station, and this is it. So this is the ideal time to tell you there are actually two Walthams. There's the Waltham that we're walking around, and there's New Waltham. And to get to New Waltham, all you need to do is drive down that road behind me. That takes you towards New Waltham. That's where Wal Waltham Railway Station used to be. We'll talk about that in that episode. For now though, we're going back the other way and heading towards Grove Park next. On Ings Lane we have the allotments. These are sited on a former gravel pit which was excavated to maintain and repair the roads around the village. Not far down on the left hand side is Waltham Cemetery which opened for burials in 1906 and was then extended in 1997. It has around 1500 interments. There are five Commonwealth war graves among them, one from World War I and four from World War II. In 2016, Waltham Cemetery was declared the best kept cemetery in northern Lincolnshire. Now let's go into Grove Park. This is an 11 acre piece of land which was once the grounds of Grove House, where today the Grove Residential Home now stands. Running around the edge of the park is a peaceful stream called Buck Beck. The park was opened in 1983 after much work by the parish council to clear what was an overgrown site. It was landscaped and a path was put in to make it accessible for all. It's not uncommon to see snowdrops in here. Okay, from here you can see Waltham's biggest and most well-known landmark, hopefully. I don't know whether you can see it behind all this waste ground and these uh, railings. It's Waltham Windmill, a six-sailed windmill, which we'll be checking out a little bit later. A bit of a teaser for you. We're not going there quite yet. If you can't see it, I will just point it out to you. It's there. But we will see that a bit close, a bit more close and personal uh, later on. We're heading back into the village centre now. There's a few more things to catch there. Then we're going to head down Mill Rise towards Waltham Windmill. Skinner's Lane is next and we're heading into the oldest part of the village. You can almost instantaneously tell that because the streets are now much narrower. Skinner's Lane is where Waltham Tea Gardens is located, but it's not on the route because it doesn't open until 2pm. I've heard only good things about them and their link is below. New Road now and here we have the local dentist and a few more local shops before we turn left onto Kirkgate. Kirkgate, of course, means Church Street, but there's no church on it these days. Instead, it's dominated by a big spa store and the Tilted Barrel Pub. What pub describes the Tilted Barrel as having the look and feel of a cosy country pub? Up the side of this is Kirkgate Public Car Park, which will take us to the back of the Village Green, the Parish Council Office and a block of public toilets. These have been maintained by the Parish Council since 2006. Okay, now we're going to make our way towards the windmill. As I said earlier, this is Waltham's biggest and best landmark. It's a six-sailed windmill and there's a few other bits and bobs around it as well of interest. Let's make our way down there and check it out. On the way to the mill, we passed Waltham's Methodist Church on Cheapside. This was built by the Wesleyans and it was opened in 1875. Mill View is virtually opposite. If ever there was a street name that was accurate, well this is it. There's some great views of the mill from here and via a footpath we can walk to it. Waltham has had a mill since 1666. Originally there was a trestle post mill here which blew down in 1744, was replaced and was then blown down again in 1873. The current mill dates from 1878 and it was designed to produce flour. It has two so-called grey stones cut from the rock of the Peak District and two French quartzite stones. Within the grounds of the windmill is a museum dedicated to the former RAF Grimsby. It's located in the former WAF Canteen and Kitchen, the only RAF building left in Waltham Village. There's also a restaurant and a cafe close by. Various events are held here annually, including a firework display in November. 
So as well as the windmill, also in this area, you've got the Grimsby and Cleethorpes Model Engineering Society. It's a model uh, railway, it's a miniature railway, and you can have train rides here. Here's the station, and the station is called Windmill Way Station. There's a map of this, there's a board just next to the uh, station building here. Here we go. It's quite a big uh, thing actually. So there's the map there. There's even a tunnel on it as well. <laughs> it's quite a quite a thing and uh, there we go there's the train so yeah if you come to the windmill you can also get a train ride as well the last part of our route sees us make our way to Waltham Park we do that via Westfield Road Barnaby Road and a petrol station this is Porter's, which appears to be closed. There's not a lot out there about this, but I'm almost certain this would have been something else before it was a garage. I'll leave that one to the experts. Next, we dive down Archer Road, another residential area, and this is our route to Waltham Park. Here's the local bowls club, which was formed in 1990 under the name of Park Avenue. In 1996, the club relocated here and were renamed Waltham Park Bowls Club. Unlike Grove Park, Waltham Park has a lot more facilities for sports and recreation, including this playground, named the Neville Turn Away play area. And the path around the park runs over another stretch of Buck Beck as it makes its way towards the River Freshney. We're done walking, so now let's talk about RAF Grimsby. To the south of the village on the border with East Lindsay is the former RAF Grimsby. Operational during World War II as part of Bomber Command, it was initially a satellite station for nearby RAF Binbrook. By early 1943, the station was equipped with its own Lancaster bombers, those operated by No. 100 Squadron. Although the station was officially called RAF Grimsby, servicemen and locals referred to it as Waltham. Flying began here in 1933, when a grass strip operated as Grimsby's municipal airport. Unusually, RAF Grimsby closed before the Germans surrendered. Its hangars were then used for storage and the flying field reverted back to agricultural use. Years later, the A16, which passes the station, was improved, forming a bypass for the village of Holton Le Clay. This cut into a large proportion of the station. Many of the airfield buildings still survive today and are currently in industrial use.
The last part of the trip around Waltham takes us through some of the western housing estates that line both sides of Barnaby Road. These are overwhelmingly residential areas built mainly between the 1960s and the present day. The easiest way to show you these was to drive around them, so here is a three minute long journey around them in the car. I'll see you at a restaurant shortly where we'll wrap this one up. Okay, so we've come out of Waltham now over the border into the next village and this is the one you'll be seeing next time out. You'll notice behind me there's a restaurant called Veronica's Larder. That's where I'm going to be starting. I'm hoping this weather holds actually because now it's starting to warm up a bit. There's a blue sky above me. Hopefully I'm not going to be freezing as I walk around this next one. Anyway, this has been the parish of Waltham and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out. Mm -hmm.